Welcome back to National Report. You are taking a live look right now at Marietta, Georgia. This is where some voters are headed to the polls, uh, but we're live in places all across the country. There we go. Live look outside. Uh, keep in mind more than 2 million early votes already cast in the peep state today. Two hotly contested races in Georgia, one for the Senate, the other for governor. National correspondent Mike Carter is live uh, in the peach state speaking with some voters. Mike, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, guys. That's right. Polls are open here in Georgia today. What's going to be particularly of interest, especially for Republicans uh, this time around, uh, are those uh, more rural uh, precincts here in the Peach State. Uh, last year, in January of 21, Kelly Leffler, David Perdue, when they had their runoff races for the Senate, uh, a lot of rural voters didn't come out to support Republicans. So the GOP is really hoping to get those voters in particular to come out and support uh, Herschel Walker and Brian Kemp today. As we know, Brian Kemp with a healthy uh, way of uh, about eight points. He's up right now on Stacey uh, Abrams. Uh, well, Herschel Walker, uh, he is in a neck and neck race with Raphael Warnock. We're here in suburban Atlanta. If you want to know just how much of an institution Herschel Walker is, we're here at this polling place. But take a look over to my left here, right across the street. Take a look at the name of this street that we're on. Herschel Drive. That's how much the name Herschel Walker is a part of the folks here in Georgia. And as we got out and talked to people here in Atlanta, well, they're very much excited for today's race. Who are you voting for? Can I say? You absolutely can. Honey, I'm Republican all the way. Walk of my dog. Are you a fan of Herschel? No. Okay. I used to be when he was uh, playing college ball in Georgia. It's because I don't know what to believe what the news media report on him, you know, so I don't really know, but at this point, I would not vote for no Hirsch Walker, he gave me a million dollars. You've already voted, who did you vote for? Uh, Brian Kemp, for sure, and Herschel Walker also. Yeah. Herschel Walker in particular, what is it about his campaign that separates himself from Raphael Warnock and the Democrats? Uh, he just seems so much more sincere to me than the other one. Who you plan on voting for? Uh, Warnock. What do you like about Raphael Warnock? I don't know. He got a little bit more experience than uh, Herschel Walker. Is there one issue that is important to you? Is it high gas prices, inflation? I love it. And I don't believe in abortion. Uh, I voted for uh, Herschel Walker. He has values that I have. What issues are important to you as a Walker voter? Well, main issue is abortion. It does bother me that these accusations have come up, but uh, I look at what, uh, what, he, what he stands for rather than what is this in his past. And I don't know really what was in his past. Those are accusations that have not been proven. And so I'd, I'd rather look at what, what is he going to do. Who do you think will win? That's a toss up. This state is just full of just surprises and everything. It could be Herschel, it could be Raphael. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I would like for Raphael to win, but we, we just don't know. The climate is just is culpable at this point. Do you have any friends who maybe voted Democrat in the past who maybe are going to vote Republican? I have, yes. Um, they've told me. I've had about maybe three or four who switched up um, because of just unknown issues from the other candidate. And so because of that, they said, I don't really trust the Democratic candidate. I'm going to go with something new because that'll run our country better. A lot of people think a red wave is coming. Is that what you feel is happening here in Georgia? Most definitely, yes, sir. People are tired of what's going on. They want to change. So, Do you think the red wave is coming? I hope so. And more than 2.5 million voters have already voted early in this election. Uh, keep in mind, this is the key number today. 50%, either Raphael Warnock uh, or Herschel Walker, will need to eclipse 50% of the vote to get a majority of the vote. There's actually three candidates running for Senate here in Georgia. There's a third party candidate that's siphoning away votes, siphoning away votes from both Walker uh, and, and Warnock. So if, unless one of those two candidates gets above that 50% mark, you could have another election, a runoff election, on December 6th. So that is the mark that everyone's looking at today. Who is going to get above that 50% mark? Hopefully we'll know by the end of the day. Back to you guys. Yeah, many say that they won't get Pat 50 or more. However, Trafalgar poll actually has one poll showing Walker at 50. Could be a surprising night. Mike Carter live in Georgia. Mike, very we'll tight. Yeah, just a bit here. Good to see you guys.
2022. Meanwhile, this Virginia Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin and his Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears shocking the nation, also the state last year after they broke Virginia Democrats' 12 year hold on the governor's office. So could a similar upset be on the horizon tonight in several key battleground states? Uh, Lieutenant Governor Winston Sears here live with us. Good to see you again, uh, Winston. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate that. Um, have you cast your ballot yet? Have, have, have you voted? And then also, what is it that you think that is driving folks to the polls this year? We've already seen more than 42 million voters in early voting. Many say, hey, it's inflation. It's the economy. We need to change uh, how much we're paying or crime is a big issue. But then the other side says it's democracy. Um, it's abortion. Your thoughts on that? What I'm going to tell you is how sweet the night will be because we are going to bring in our candidates this year. You know why? Because the people are tired. They're tired of being controlled. They're tired of being talked down to. The Democrats, unfortunately, have damaged their brand. They have allowed the progressive left to pull them all the way to the left. That's not where we are. We don't want this nonsense that we see happening where we don't know what a woman is. In fact, uh, where are the feminists to say, wait a minute, you're giving scholarships then to men who are claiming to be women? Our daughters will never get into college that, you know, unless we can afford it. So here in Virginia, we're again going to show the way because, as you know, our polls closed at about seven. I did vote. I early voted and we have been pushing early voting. And we think we think that we see that red wave coming. So we've got Yesley Vega in the seventh. Uh, she will be our first Latina uh, ever elected from the former capital of the Confederacy, no less. We will have Hong Kao, our first Asian, again elected from the former capital of the Confederacy. We've got former fighter pilot, actually helicopter pilot, and geriatric naval nurse. Um, um, uh, Goodness, I'm tired. Can you tell yeah. Jen Keegan's in the second? I've been up for three hours, folks. It feels like election all over again. Yeah. But we're going to bring this, and we've got several other races that we're watching. And, and what will it really mean? It will tell the Democrats, finally, you didn't listen to us when Virginia voted for different. And co we couldn't have won in Virginia had we not had Democrats who were sick and tired of it and, and their children not learning crime you know, fentanyl coming in, yeah. the education is a problem, the inflation is not transitory. So things are going to be changing. Yeah, a lot to watch for. It's interesting to, to chat with you about this because in Virginia, it really was about what was being taught in the classroom that got the parental vote out, that got the mom vote out, if you will. That's when a lot of things change, at least for the Commonwealth there. Um, and if you brought it out, you were talking about inflation, and many Americans paying more than $3.80 a gallon uh, just going to the oh my pump. Goodness. It affects the entire country. It's not just, it's not just you know, here or there. No matter where you go in this country, you you are paying more. And the big question here, Lieutenant Governor, I wanted to ask you is many candidates are saying this. Are you better off today than you were exactly. two years ago? Your thoughts on that? Never forget that we, the voters, are interviewing these candidates for the job of representing us. And what will happen is if we don't think you're doing a good job, then we're going to put somebody else in to represent us. That's the beauty of this country. But unfortunately, the progressive left, and by the way, that's a misnomer. They're not progressive at all. They're regressive. And they're trying to take us off a cliff. They're trying to burn the house down. For what reason? But you know who's not believing that? The people who are coming in at the border. All I say is do it the right way. We've got to know who's coming in. We've got to know what they're bringing because fentanyl is coming in. And, and you know, here in Virginia, uh, unnatural deaths, number one, fentanyl. Yeah. Not guns, not anything else. Drugs. Yeah. 18 to 45 leading cause of death, CDC, uh, overdose of fentanyl. Uh, definitely a major problem, major issue there, um, something that needs to obviously be resolved. Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears of Virginia, who has already cast her ballot, uh, and we would assume who you voted for there. Uh, good to see you, Winsome. Thanks so much for that. We appreciate it. I voted for change and progress. Well, Vote. Get out there. There it is. There's the message from Lieutenant Governor. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you.